Hello everyone, I'm Manish Sharma, a PhD student at the University of Vienna. I would like to welcome you to my talk, Density Functional Embedding Scheme for Molecules and Periodic Systems. I'm developing and implementing Density Functional Embedding Theory, or DFET, within the TurboMobile program package that employs Gaussian basis functions. The DFET implementation is coupled with correlated wave function theory methods like molar placid and coupled cluster methods like CCSDT. Furthermore, it is coupled with real-time time-dependent density functional theory or RTTDDFT. So what is DFET or density functional embedding theory? In a nutshell, it allows us to treat a small portion of our system with a high level of theory, i.e. a more accurate and computationally expensive method, and the rest not so important system can be treated at a lower level of theory that is not so computationally demanding. Therefore, DFET sees its applications in hybrid systems such as solvated molecules or a molecule adsorbed on a surface. In such systems, the focus of study or the region of interest is usually only a small region around the cluster or molecule. Most of the times, a periodic surface, which is the environment for the molecule, can be described using lower levels of theory like LDA or GGADFT. The molecule, however, requires a high-level method like hybrid DFT or wave function theory methods like CCST. In such a scenario, if you use LDADFT to study the entire system, then you will get large errors for local properties like the adsorption energy or the excitation energy of the molecule. However, using a high level of theory for the entire system is not only not needed, but also computationally prohibitive. While you may be able to perform hybrid DFT for the periodic systems, an efficient periodic CCSD code is not so straightforward or practical. Furthermore, the periodic boundary conditions lead to unrealistic surface coverages and one requires really large supercells to address this issue. The solution to these problems is provided quite naturally in the framework of density functional theory, where the properties of the system are determined by the electron density. Therefore, the total electron density of this hybrid system can be partitioned into a cluster and environment density. Then the influence of the environment on the cluster can be accounted for in the form of an embedding potential, which is a function of cluster and environment density. Various strategies to construct the embedding potential have been implemented. Let's have a look. Here, the benzene molecule is our environment and the water molecule is our cluster, that is, the region of interest. The first method is to relax the isolated environment density, then plug this density into the embedding potential and relax the cluster density in the presence of this embedding potential. This method is approximate in nature due to the presence of kinetic energy density functional or KEDF in the formula of embedding potential. Like the exchange correlation term, the KEDF are not exactly known. The second method is to determine the density of the total system using a lower level method, then subtract the isolated cluster density and use the remainder as the environment density. The cluster density can then be relaxed in the presence of this environment density. Similar to the first method, this method is also approximate in nature due to the presence of KEDFs. Lastly, the method three is pretty much the same as the first method However, here, the use of KEDFs in the embedding potential is avoided by using a projection operator that orthogonalizes the orbitals of the cluster with respect to the environment orbitals. To sum up, method 1 and method 2 are suitable for weakly interacting systems, while method 3 gives exact results even for strongly interacting systems. It is also quite common to perform a freeze-in thought procedure where the roles of the cluster and the environment are interchanged iteratively. So enough about the theory, now let's see what kind of results can one expect in practice. To start off, let us have a look at the ground state properties with DFET. To give you an idea about the kind of accuracy that one can expect with method 1 and method 3, here are the molecular binding energies obtained using molecule in molecule DFET. Bear in mind that these are just DFT in DFT results and only serve as a benchmark. Therefore, the results can only be as good as DFT. For the weakly interacting HF and H2O dimers, method 1 with or without Friesenthal or a supermolecular basis gives reasonable accuracy. For strongly interacting systems, however, for example the ethane molecule partitioned at the carbon-carbon covalent bond, the errors are really large. The method 3 on the other hand gives exact results for weakly or strongly interacting systems provided Friesenthal and a supermolecular basis is used. We also implemented periodic and periodic DFET with multiple K points using method 3 and recovered exact total DFT energies. For example, consider the 1D periodic neoprene chain. 
The labeled atoms were considered as the active periodic subsystem and the rest as the environment. Until now we have seen method 1 and method 3 in action but only with DFT in DFT embedding. So no improvement to the DFT description was provided. I'll now show you molecule in periodic DFET coupled with CCSDT. So now let's have a look at the adsorption energies of the hydrogen molecule or H2 at various separation distances from a periodic 1D hydrogen chain consisting of 10 atoms obtained using LDA DFT compared with the superior CCFCT method. Clearly the LDA description is insufficient over binding the H2 and too short equilibrium distance. Now let us define the hydrogen molecule as well as the two hydrogen atoms under it as the cluster for DFED and the rest as environment. We use method 2 to construct the embedding potential then use this embedding potential to perform CCSDT in DFT calculations. Clearly CCSDT coupled with DFED is able to provide a major improvement over the LDA DFT description at negligible cost. Next, I would like to show you the excited state properties studied using CC2 and RTTD-DFT coupled with DFET. For CC2-DFET, we take solvated molecules like acetone, acrolein, and methylene cyclopropene as the cluster for DFET, and the water molecules are considered as environment. Here is a comparison of the lowest excitation energy of these molecules obtained using CC2 on the entire system and the CC2-DFET errors using different methods. We see that the method 1 without Friesenthal performs the best due to cancellation of errors. Since only the basis functions centered on the solute molecules were used for CC2 DFET, we see tremendous reduction in computational cost with negligible errors. Lastly, let us have a look at the performance of RTTD DFT coupled with DFET. Here we consider a system of interacting chromophores, i.e. a benzene fulvene dimer at a separation of 4 angstroms. We compare the absorption spectra obtained using standard RTTD DFT and DFET method 3 using the projection operator and a supermolecular basis. The DFET spectrum was obtained by considering benzene as the cluster and fulvene as the environment and then vice versa. The DFET spectrum is able to reproduce all the major features of the reference spectrum with minor differences. Please note that in the DFET procedure, the environment density was kept fixed at the ground state density and only the cluster density was evolved in time. Therefore, the environment cannot respond to the excitations of the cluster. This gives rise to the minor differences that we see. If we use the approximate DFET method 1 with KEDFs, we see that the difference between the reference and the DFET spectrum is much larger. This brings me to the end of the results for DFET. In conclusion, DFED using Gaussian basis functions is a promising tool for the study of hybrid systems. Molecule in molecule, periodic in periodic, and molecule in periodic DFED have been implemented. DFED coupled with wave function theory methods offers a reasonably improved description of ground state and excited state properties. Furthermore, DFED coupled with RTTD DFT provides reasonably accurate absorption spectra. So where do we go from here? Well, currently the molecule in periodic embedding only works with method 2. We will also like to use the exact method 3 for it. It would also be interesting to study the nonlinear properties of molecules in the vicinity of periodic surfaces via DFET coupled with RTTDFT. In the end, I would like to thank my supervisor, Professor Marek Sierka, for his guidance and support throughout. Also, the NOA project for the funding and TurboMole for the development support. I would also like to thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity to present my work at this conference. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention and look forward to answering your questions or doubts.